So yesterday was a absolute whirlwind of a day where the special rapporteur, his fake job, washed out politician David Johnston, came to the conclusion that a public inquiry is not needed, yet he will somehow compromise with Canadians and give them public hearings as if that is any sort of compromise. Welcome back to another video, everybody. Today we're dissecting what happened yesterday. A little bit more information has come out and some, you know, after action reviews since the release of the initial statement of, yeah, we're, we're not doing a public inquiry. Before we get into it, I want to encourage you to give a like and subscribe if you haven't already, as well as if you'd like to buy some merchandise. We've got some awesome stuff. The link is down in the description, as well as the pinned comment below. You've got some Keep Calm merch. That line is the best selling right now. We've got shirts, uh, hoodies, hats, everything that you could want. Coffee mugs have been a pretty big seller lately, so... That is linked down in the description below. Here is the video of David Johnson basically explaining his relationship with Justin Trudeau. How are they were ski buddies? <laughs> Buckle up. This is going to be a weird video. But you've heard the criticism from the opposition and others about your appointment, about your role based on your relationship with Mr. Trudeau's family. So why are you the person to lead those hearings going forward rather than a judge, an independent judge who could hold hearings in camera or in public. Well, let me respond by stating basic facts. First of all, my friendship with the current Prime Minister. Um, when our children, five, were ages seven to 12, uh, we had a um, condo at the foot of Mont Tremblant. Uh, I knew Mr. Trudeau's father. Uh, he had a country home about 50 kilometers away in Val Moran. On, I think, five occasions over several years, he and his three sons came and parked their car at our parking lot outside our condo, and we skied. On one of those five occasions or so, he had to leave early to get back to Montreal, and on that occasion, I drove the three sons over to their mother's home, country home, which was about 10 kilometers present. Those are the so-called neighborhoods. Um, my friendship with the current prime minister uh, was based only on a few skiing expeditions with my children. He was a student at McGill where I was principal, uh, and amongst about 20,000 students, I would see him from time to time. In that period of time, until he became a liberal member of parliament, and I was governor general, I had no meetings with Mr. Trudeau, Mr. Justin Trudeau. Just on the ski hill. I had no letters that I can recall, no telephone calls. Um, the only occasion I recall meeting him in that period of 40 years was at the funeral of his father, which my wife and I attended. So there was no interaction with respect to the current prime minister of a, a friendly kind, other than the respect I have for a graduate of McGill University. And my only real contact occurred when he became an elected member of parliament and I held the office of governor general. Those are the facts of the so-called friendship and the scheme. Yeah. I don't know if anyone's buying that, even if that were to be true, even if he never had contact with him, they still have a very kind of intimate relationship based off of them being friends when Trudeau was younger. I mean, for crying out loud, he's old enough to be Justin Trudeau's babysitter. Why? I mean, that's probably something that happened. I mean, there's no evidence to say that, but I would, I would go out on a limb and say, yeah, probably he was Trudeau's babysitter. Here's what Pierre Polyev has to say about the matter. He's not happy that Justin Trudeau's ski buddy came to this conclusion. There's no common sense in Justin Trudeau's Ottawa. We see today that his ski buddy, cottage neighbor, family friend, and member of the Beijing-financed Trudeau Foundation came out and did exactly what I predicted, helped Trudeau cover up uh, the influence by Beijing in our democracy. We know that Beijing interfered in two elections to help Trudeau win. We know that Beijing gave $140,000 to the Trudeau Foundation with the express purpose of buying the love and the loyalty of Justin Trudeau. And we know that Trudeau has been briefed on these matters for years and done absolutely nothing about it except try to keep it quiet and call names anyone, name call anyone who, who spoke out about it. And then in order to further sweep the matter under the rug, he put his friend, uh, his ski buddy, 
his cottage neighbor and Trudeau Foundation member, David Johnston, in charge of uh, today's uh, um, whitewash attempt. Well, conservatives are not buying it. We need a full public inquiry to get to the bottom of Beijing's interference in our democracy. And that's what I will deliver when I am Prime Minister. There will be a full public inquiry into this mess. Uh, and in the meantime, we will continue to push for a real foreign influence registry that exposes anyone who does paid work on behalf of a foreign dictatorship to manipulate our politics. It's just common sense. Let's bring it home. Let's bring home control of our democracy back into the hands of the Canadian people. I don't understand why it's so controversial or why it's even up for debate. The fact that the special rapporteur, fake job, by the way, for washed out politician David Johnson, has a clear conflict of interest. They know each other outside of work. Even if it were just to be, even if the only contact they ever had was when Justin Trudeau was a kid. I mean, they were still ski buddies, so outside of like young childhood they've worked they've passed each other they've had this intertwined family relationship for quite some time so it's there's no way that this cannot be a ethics violation this is just so many levels this breaks so many rules and laws here in canada but the only reason it gets they get away with it is because the liberals are in power even though the majority of canadians don't want this, even though the majority of Canadians are saying, no, we want a public inquiry. In fact, you two shouldn't ever talk to each other publicly again. In fact, you, you two should resign. That's not going to happen. But I did post a video recently about Jagmeet Singh coming to the same conclusion of Pierre Polyev. That's right. And if you missed that, you should definitely go back on the channel that he's calling for a public inquiry. Now, can this shift the tides in politics here in Canada? I am optimistic i am optimistic i could be naive could be ignorance but i'm very optimistic at the fact that jagmeet singh and pierre polyev want the exact same thing now with the right if if the right person were to put them in the room and say listen you guys need to come up with a plan on how to get trudeau out how to get more people to dislike trudeau and then call for a vote of no confidence because jagmeet singh the ndp are the ones that basically have to do that if the conservatives do that and ndp do that then we're golden. So it's very interesting times, and we're going to have to wait and see. Maybe we don't have to wait two years for the next election. It's very, very, I'm very hopeful. I'm very hopeful and optimistic about the situation. But that's where we're going to end it, folks. Thanks for watching. I'd love to know what you guys think about this whole special rapporteur thing. If you agree with the decision that it is a breach of uh, you know, national security to have a public inquiry, or if you think it's just, just a bunch of garbage and we should do it anyways, like we did in the public inquiry. Right with the Emergencies Act public inquiry, we've already done it. Why is this any different? Well, because it would be very, very harmful to the liberals. That's why. That's where we're going to end it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for making it to the end of the video. If you want to support the channel financially, you can do so by checking out the merch shop linked right up there. Or if you want to do something for free, which is also absolutely acceptable and highly encouraged, you can subscribe right there. If you want to continue watching videos like this, you can do so by clicking or tapping right there to watch the next upcoming video. And if you want to watch a little bit of different content, but also Canadian stuff, you can do so by clicking right up there. That's my second channel, House of Canada, also known as the House of Commons Highlights. Thank Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.